We are now moving, um, taking our wave surfing on it and going to the country of Slovenia. And I hope as we get to the country of Slovenia, it's not cold today, uh, because from what I've always seen about Slovenia, it's that it's generally, you know, a cold area. So I hope today we can be able to surf. And I want to say uh, to Alenka Strukelj, Dobedan. Welcome, do, uh, Alenka, over to you. Uh, hello, Isabella. Uh, this is a nice introduction. Yeah, it's quite warm today. So I think it's probably about 25 degrees. And uh, as you said, that um, most of you were not been to, to Italy. So we are neighboring country. We've been there for many times. So we are glad to be. So, <laughs> um, so thank you again. So that I won't be too long, uh, let me start. Um, so my name is Alinka Strukel. I am a female way of change ambassador for Slovenia and um, I'm also a storytelling coach. So I mostly work with women who want to find their authentic voice, whether for being more clear of uh, who they are or finding their path to their customers to connect with them more easily. So how it can be better than through stories. So um, stories, um, as we uh, saw many times, uh, heal our deeply cut wounds. Um, telling story can be a catharsis uh, for both uh, the one who is telling it and the one who's listening. Uh, so, uh, mo but most of all, the stories uh, connect us with others. Uh, through them, we develop understanding and uh, empathy of others. We learn and progress through them, and they also inspire us uh, to change. So, um, an uh, American writer, educator, and activist, um, Terry Tempest Williams, in uh, her book, When Women Were Birds, 54 Variations of a Voice, beautifully dives into the process of finding her own voice by saying, for uh, many years, I wandered through the desert in search of a narrative that was not mine. I did not feel I belonged there. I was borrowing a landscape until I find my own. And this quote is um, like I would have written it. Um, I went through that story and my clients or the women I work with also go through this quite similar story. So it is the story of finding my own voice. So a lot has been said in those two days about the importance of the stories we tell. We listen to so many inspiring stories of how they change the world of individuals and as well as um, the world, their country. And reflecting back on uh, um, my personal experience and also that I work as a professional on the topic, let me in this short presentation point out why the stories um, and us finding our uh, authentic voice through them is so important and valuable. So finding our own voice is, uh, means that you know who you are at your core, no matter what you're telling it um, uh, unapologetically. And then you use this voice to speak up and uh, tell the world that you matter, even if you feel otherwise. And it really takes a courage and faith to own this voice. And as we've seen, um, the narratives that we tell shape our everyday lives. And as we can change the narratives um, then we, that we tell ourselves, then also we uh, change the, uh, um, the new um, narratives and to enact positive changes in our societies. So powerful stories remain, remains us, uh, reminds us that um, what matters most uh, in, for any organization or community or a person is the story we tell ourselves. And the most effective way that to shake things up is by changing the story. So why is this 
important right now. Today, at this occasion, as the uh, uh, ambassador of uh, Female Way of Change for Slovenia, I'd like to emphasize um, the topic of women in Slovenia that I came in contact with as a storytelling coach. But believe, I believe that uh, there are many women from all over the world who can relate to these issues as well. So I, I believe that um, Slovenia, like most European countries, is an area where girls and women are the safest and closest to equality with men. We have uh, free access to education, uh, health and social services. Uh, most women are also employed and we have one of the lowest discrepancies uh, between the wages regarding the sex. Thus, we might be seen as a privileged from the perspective of the most of the world but we still face obstacles which prevent us to speak from our authentic voice. And sometimes even more in the areas where we need to, uh, we deny ourselves to write the, uh, for the right to speak out. We often stay quiet and doubt ourselves. The fact is that this achieved um, academic, economic, political and social equality of women with men still differs from the actual one. In Slovenia, we might be satisfied in those areas, while others can still be a cause of concern. Uh, many women are still facing um, from stereotypes that should no longer exist. They continue to live in fear of sexual harassment, abuse of power, or of worse, even uh, violence at home, at work, in schools or on the streets. And uh, many of these um, are also linked to the narratives that we tell ourselves. As a story coach, um, I can hear lots of stories from women of Slovenia from all backgrounds, how they sacrifice their dreams and goals to follow non-written social rules and expectations, um, that they are primarily mothers and partners and only later entrepreneurs and employees, which results that by the time they should reach their full potential, they spend most of the time juggling between building a career and caring for their families. And on the path of helping others to fulfill their dreams, they lose their self completely. They stop dreaming and stop growing. So in order um, to feel equal to men, a lot of women also believe that they need to act perfectly in every of many roles they play in life. It's not only that society expects us to be flawless mothers, flawless businesswomen, flawless partners, sisters and daughters. We demand that perfection also per for ourselves, perhaps even more. So why do we want to talk about it? Because the pandemics, all in the pandemics, during, uh, this became even more obvious. Women were the ones who are mo most cases uh, demanded job from home. So when the kindergartens and schools were closed, they uh, even more conflicts between their work and private life emerged, especially with the uh, mothers of young children. Uh, they also needed to make more commitments related to uh, educating children. So they got another role that they need to play perfectly, a role of flawless teacher. They were not only torn between work and increased responsibilities at home, but they also felt additional shame and guilt of being torn between their jobs and their families especially for uh, not being present in any of their uh, roles, not as mothers, not as wives, not as employees. Uh, women also uh, more frequently lost their jobs during pandemics, which pushed them back into domestic uh, area even more. So this situation deepened the gender gap in the labor market and opened many questions uh, that be will become challenges in the future. 
including the impact of the amount of pensions that women will receive. So in the other hand, most of these women, uh, also the women who did not have the obligations uh, at home, so either they are uh, single mothers or uh, they don't have children, they felt more obliged to be available to the employer at the time. And even in their free time, and even during their vacation. So otherwise they were afraid that they will lose jobs and with it um, social and uh, financial security. And uh, uh, also the overload of, uh, they, they also got this feeling of overload in the workplace, so burnout, depression, and uh, also uh, the feeling of being left out. So many women are uh, thus the, uh, the opinion that the pandemic, um, in addition to these major uh, changes that uh, that were present in their daily lives has also a negative impact on the development of their careers, not only in the short term during the pandemic, but also in the long uh, term. A lot of women during the pandemic that started to wonder if they still want to progress in their jobs at all. Some of them may even want to consider to change their jobs completely or they even want to uh, end their current careers. They are thinking of starting something totally new that might be maybe closer to their hearts and desires, but not so demanding. Um, but they would be easily juggling between their roles as mothers, partners, experts. But when they are starting to think about this new career, uh, many self-doubts and fears creeped in, in their story. So the story of not being good enough, the story of being too old, because they are women in their 40s. Um, maybe that they are not experienced enough, they don't have the right certificates, the education. There's also the fear of failure the fear of uh, shame of what might people think if they start something unexpected. Um, and sometimes just questions like, what do I want and what do I like seem too frightening to them. So working with them, um, I saw that uh, what those mo these women mostly needed to hear is uh, just to be able to speak with their authentic voice was just five simple sentences. So be unafraid of being alone. Walk your own path. Get to know your voice without judgment. Be honest with yourself and act upon your creative call. So it's, it's easy to say that, but it, works a lot in, uh, to, to go over these fears and uh, limiting beliefs, but claiming their ownership over their story, help them regain their new power, self-worth and courage to live in their authentic truth. And that opened them to new paths, which they long thought that they were so that would never emerge. So through sharing their story, many of them are find their new calling, a new job, and are not satisfied in it. And not only that, with uh, sharing their stories through books and talks in the family, friends, community, they also start another momentum going. When they change, this change didn't affect only them, but also others started to listening and speaking and they wanted to change as well. So as we've seen in those two days, when you lead others with your true hearts, kindness, compassion, and the truth, others will always follow. Your life is not only about the perfection or destination, 
So you need to leave, lead from where you are. Let others be inspired by this process. Grow into a person you want to be and invite others to this beautiful journey. Everything starts with us and everything starts with the first step. So if I may ask a question, what would be your first step? Thank you. Wow, <clears throat> amazing, Alenka. And I think um, that is a critical, critical um, question that you are asking in terms of as change makers, what are our first steps? Because uh, these steps don't have to be major steps in terms of what you've shared. Um, they really are not big steps, you know, that require lots of, you know, funds and resources. It's just taking out of who you are and what you're able to provide onto the next person. I just want to check, is Gabriela um, also joining? Hello, Gabriela, over to yeah. you. Thank you, Pivelo. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank all the organizers, everybody that collaborates with this conference because it's such a beautiful event that most of all brings this um, feeling that we so much lack, which is this togetherness feeling, uh, the sharing of everything that goes in our hearts. So it's so powerful and beautiful to see this. Um, I'm overwhelmed. Alenka, this, your words were also very much amazing. Um, and, uh, and I will talk about something that is very connected to my activity as a, as a consultant, a breath coach, uh, and I set up to talk about the mind and the body connection that somehow relates to almost everything that is uh, being said these days uh, and in this conference. Um, so the separation between the mind and the body does not exist as we know as our mind is uh, part of our body and our body is part of our mind. mind. Uh, through our mind, we do experience the world and uh, we handle also our emotions. And we know that there are, you know, these uh, hormones, neurotransmitters, uh, the physical messengers that bring all this information to our brains and help us deal with, uh, with everything that is around us. Um, Interventions like meditation and mindfulness, which, is, which are things with which I deal, not only make us feel better, as they actually influence key aspects of our biology. In meditation, we disconnect from the forms and from our world, the world, the material world that we deal with every day. And it is by bringing these interventions to our daily and our personal life that we can also bring the peace we so much need, we so much eager, because the peace comes and is within ourselves. And this is, I think, very much related to all these that we are uh, talking about, of uh, bringing peace to the world and starting in ourselves. We can train our mind, you know, it's a, uh, Meditation is a very powerful tool, tool for us to train our mind, for the mind not to tell us what to do, but for us to tell the mind what to do, and therefore becoming powerful and strong and create ourselves. Everybody must meditate to bring their self in. And living mindfully at all times will bring that peace that we so much need and will help us bringing the purpose of living. And we live in collaboration in our body. There are millions of other cells in our own intestines. There, li there, is, there are millions of other living beings showing us that we are never alone. We are not depending only on ourselves. We depend on each other and we should collaborate uh, in our own life to bring that peace with so much eager. And the suggestion I always give is to follow our co-inhabitants in this planet Earth, you know? There are some of our co-inhabitants co uh, that do live in a very tight collaboration. Without that collaboration, they are not supposed to be living. And some of these beings are the penguins, you know, that they live in this harsh environment where there is a lot of cold and 
because there is always one that is more fit to care for the others and to help the others, he bridges, he brings, he comes outside where the, all the cold is and he protects this not so fit penguin that cannot survive. You know, and after some, some months, that one that was not so fit becomes fitter and will protect the one that was before the helper. And I think this is the, our biggest lesson. If we manage to follow the penguins, I think we'll be very well off. So thank you very much. And once again, congratulations to put this together. This is very much needed, very much beautiful. Thank you. Tanya? I'm crying. <laughs> thank you, Tabello. <laughs> I want it to be powerful, but that's my power. <laughs> Being totally moved and touched by our Slovenian wave. <laughs> I knew they were powerful, but it just blew me away. So I'm uh, barely catching up <laughs> to balance on it. Um, no, really. Um, well, I know them, right, from before, not just within female. <laughs> definitely cried uh not just within female wave of change uh but um just inspired by them every time we're together and what we do individually and when we come together i always just feel so much potential uh and i'm so happy that from wonderful italy and wave that was just powerful splash from <laughs> slovenian hearts uh because they were nervous is this good enough again very slovenian characteristic is this powerful enough is it something that everyone will be talking about will i repeat myself is it stupid can you help me out and i just can you just go out be relaxed and make fun and give yourself out there so they gave themselves and they still have so much to give uh, i would just encourage uh, i don't know learn from them so uh, we have a new wave maker here as well sasha also amazing and one thing that came at the end of slovenian event she said oh, i'm not a good public speaker i don't i still need to be better at i said well you're gonna swim a lot here so <laughs> you're awesome at it just bring yourself there and I learned also a lot from men in my uh, work and life in general, but they say, you know, it's not enough to show up. You need to show up, but then it makes a difference how you show up. And often they are there. We are afraid how you do it, right? But they are there and they are doing it. And we are questioning ourselves still. So huge thank uh, and grateful, really, very much grateful that I'm part of Slovenian team and so help. Uh, I don't know, I cannot find the word. Then I'm so have, um, happy that the uh, Slovenian team is now led by Alenka because she's very much present in uh, Slovenia with women in Slovenia, uh, seeing their hearts. And that's why I just saw that she's the perfect for this role when I decided that uh, I'll take the other role uh, for the institution, um, to lead institution that came the way from female wave of change to me and speak up, okay, let's do something bigger here in Slovenia and the right response for it. But for Alenka, uh, all the best. You are super powerful. Uh, take the lead further. And I don't know, you have to make a transition to another wave uh, with the help of Tabelo. Thank you very much.